really know how a car engine lubrication system works? Watch this video, you will understand it even better than a mechanic. It's through the filler neck of the engine. The oil is then drained from the head through the return channels, the engine block, and finally into the oil pan. If you want to check the amount of oil poured in, just use this dipstick. The oil level should not go beyond the lower and upper marks. The output rotation of the helical gear drives the oil pump and distributor. The oil which is currently lying in the oil pan is sucked in the oil pump via this intake tube. The outlet of the oil pump is divided into two channels. One channel leads to the oil filter, and the second channel leads to the pump's pressure reducing valve. If the oil pressure at the pump outlet exceeds 6 kg per centimeter, the shutoff piston of the valve is displaced, and the pressure from the engine is vented to the inlet of the oil pump. This will make sure that the stable pressure is maintained regardless of the engine speed. In the oil filter, the oil from the bulb is first forced through the filter element, and then to the central part of the filter. The oil then flows through a channel and reaches a pressure sensor. From there, it is routed to the engine block. Look in this place, a pressure relief valve is also located. It opens when the oil cannot be forced through the filter. Two situations can lead to this condition. One, when the oil is too thick due to cold weather. Two, when the filtering unit is too dirty. This is the main oil channel of the cylinder block. This channel supplies oil to the head. You can see many branches of oil flow are getting formed from the main channel. These branches of oil help to lubricate the crankshaft liner beds. The oil is then forced to flow through the crankshaft, oil passages, and then to the connecting rod journals. It forms an oil film between the connecting rod liner and the crankshaft journal. The excess oil after the film formation is squeezed out from under the liner. This gets dispersed as tiny oil particles due to the effect of centrifugal force. The oil splashes onto the cylinder walls. As the piston moves downward, the piston oil ring removes the oil from the cylinder walls. This creates oil pressure between the cylinder and the piston wall. The pressurized oil is released through the notches in the piston wall and injected into the piston. Here the oil reaches the top head of the connecting rod, which has a hole for lubricating the piston pin. At the head, the oil first reaches one of the camshaft bearings. Forming an oil film for the plane bearing, the oil is then directed to the exhaust valve rocker axis. Now let's see how the camshaft bearing is lubricated. The oil is supplied to the internal camshaft passages for lubricating the cams. Further, oil from the axis of rocker arms lubricates the last bearing of the camshaft. From this bearing, the oil is supplied to the camshaft axis of the exhaust valves. Similar to the crankcase, under the valve cover also forms an oil dust and mist. This is used to lubricate the other parts. Remember, to these parts, there is no direct oil supply. Another lubrication outlet is located near the camshaft star flange. This is where the camshaft locking plate is getting lubricated. Excess oil also flows onto the crankshaft, splashing and lubricating the timing chain. After that, the oil drains back into the crankcase. Here it is, the valve plate O-ring. This is installed in the second groove on the valve stem. Generally, valve seats are not present in the engine when they come just out of the factory. The duty of valve plate washer is to limit the amount of oil that reaches the springs. A rubber sealing ring blocks direct oil penetration through the oil seals to the valve stem. Nevertheless, a certain amount of oil does reach the valve stem. This amount is sufficient to lubricate the stem. The excess oil runs down the tapered tip of the valve guide. 